Hey, everybody. How is it going? Thanks so much for being here. I'm going to wait and see, make sure that everyone's getting in okay. It's always a, uh, always a question mark at the beginning of a Facebook Live. Uh, if you are here and you can hear and see me, uh, if you could go ahead and, awesome, say something. Okay, I've got a plus up. Very cool. Cool. Well, thanks. Um, I know I'm getting started a little late here as, you know, as happens, technical glitches. So we're going to see if this is going to, the program that I usually use to share my screen did not work. So I don't know that I'm going to be able to, hi, Karen, uh, to share my screen. So I might just be reading things today, which is really annoying. Uh, so, you know, we'll go with it and see what happens. But um, okay, cool. Someone saying can hear and see great. I say someone, it's my husband. Um, <laughs> cool. So thanks so much for being here today on, um, uh, let's see. Cool. Thank you. Okay. For the encouragement. Uh, for being here, we're talking about um, email marketing, which uh, marketing is, is one of my favorite things. Uh, I would say maybe in general um, over the past few years have just really my uh, love and just appreciation for marketing is just really, really uh, grown. And a lot of that has to do with how it's impacted my business and what I've been able to do with marketing for um, my voiceover business. So we're going to be talking about that. And all through the month of November, if you're um, on my newsletter, we're talking about email outreach in particular. Um, so one thing that, uh, that I really like to emphasize with email marketing, um, and anytime throughout this, by the way, if you have questions, go ahead and, and type in the, in the um, comments there or anything to say, uh, feel free to, to type in the comments. Um, something that I really just have to emphasize, because I think that there's a, uh, there's a mindset of, I just have to find that one magic template or that one magic uh, system that will work for me. And once I can implement that, then everything's going to be awesome for me and things are, my business is going to take off. And if that template, that magic template existed, I think that would be true. But I think where that mindset falls short is, well, one of the places, I think it's, it falls short in quite a few, but one of them is it, um, it makes it seem like the, the answer, you know, when it comes to email marketing and what to say is this thing that's really far outside of you and you have to hunt for it. And, and once you find it, then you're good to go. Um, but I would argue that when it comes to marketing of any kind and email marketing, especially this kind that I like to do, which is a really personal kind of email marketing, the, the more that you can be yourself and think about, you know, in terms of just what's, what's, a, what's common sense in the way that a, that a relationship typically goes. If you're trying to form a relationship with someone, how do you do that outreach? Um, and of course, there are rules that, you know, it's different from if you're, you know, knocking on your neighbor's door next door, that you're meeting them. That's a different scenario than sending a random email to someone that you don't know trying to book work. But the same just kind of human um, relationship building um, ideas are go with both. So I say that as a point of encouragement. If you're thinking, man, what is this secret formula? Um, the formula isn't necessarily in what to say, I would argue. Um, and it, it's more of an idea of being yourself and, and doing good outreach. Um, but I will say that there is a kind of a, a magic piece to it. But the magic piece isn't what necessarily the template that you're using, although you'll probably find some that you like that really work well for you. And I emphasize for you because you're different from every other voice actor and the companies that you reach out to are different from, you know, we're not all always reaching out to the same companies. So different templates, different uh, workflows will work differently for different people. But the thing that's consistent, the thing that I would say um, works for everybody and is where you should really focus your, your time. Um, hi, Suzanne. Um, is with consistency. So when you, you know, I would say spend less time trying to figure out the perfect workflow and the perfect email template and more time planning your, your days so that you can spend focused time doing outreach. Um, if I can get screen sharing to work, I don't know if it will, I uh, was going to show you a, an example of an email that I sent out years and years ago. And actually, it's the one that um, if you were on my email list, I sent out the response to that email. 
uh, which resulted in booking work for a lot of uh, amazing companies. And it's a, it's a company that I still do work for today. And uh, the email that I sent out was not a great email. It did not met, meet all of the criteria that I would now say is necessary or is good to include in emails. But what I did though, is I sent it. I, I went through this uh, kind of marketing phase a few years back where I just kind of, uh, I, I won't say I went nuts with marketing, but I just really ramped up and wanted to, to do a lot of great outreach. And so I made a list of clients, of dream clients I wanted to work with, and I just started targeting them. And this was before, um, this wasn't after taking a program or looking at templates. This was just, hey, I'm, I want these clients. How am I going to do this? And so the emails I sent out weren't necessarily what I would say today. You know, they didn't check all the check boxes, but they worked. Uh, some of them did. And, and one of the reasons is just because I sent them. So a lot of it has to do with consistency and um, just uh, setting aside that time every day to make it a part of your workflow to do email outreach. Um, so again, there's a lot of uh, just don't don't spam people, don't do things like uh, making it all about you. So there are things like that in your email outreach that you need to be careful of. But I would just really encourage you to, you know, if you're sending them, then uh, that's that's one step ahead. And I think some of us just have kind of a mindset uh, kind of shift that we need to make to go from planning, 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 preparation, 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 find the perfect thing to just do. So um, making that shift um, is really important. All right, so wanted to go and uh, share some of these email templates now. I mentioned that I was going to share uh, three different types. Uh, let's see, so one of them, get it pulled up here. Um, for e-learning clients, uh, specifically e-learning clients who are hiring an instructional an instructional designer. So one of the ways that I do email outreach to uh, companies who are hiring or who um, do e-learning, sometimes I'll look for companies that are hiring, uh, that are e-learning companies hiring someone in the e-learning department, and I'll target those companies. Um, I won't get into all of the reasons for that um, uh, in this uh, Facebook Live, since we're um, just talking about the template themselves. And uh, maybe when this gets posted to my site, I'll I'll post the templates there because, yeah, this is kind of a bummer that it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to share my screen with you all here. Uh, so for uh, this particular template, I'm just going to read through it. Um, and let's see, before I do that, I want to talk about the elements of the email list, so, or of the, the emails that you want to be sending out. So I mentioned, again, in my um, email that I sent out, there are four elements that you want to include. Um, and of course, there are, there are more than four, but the, the ones that we're focusing on um, for that particular email. So intrigue, just the idea that your email has to make the recipient want to open it. So having boring uh, subject lines or subject lines that are clearly um, asking for something, um, you know, you can, uh, I, I do a lot of research on just what are the best types of subject lines for people to open, you know, that, that get the best open rates. Um, short and sweet, simple um, subject lines are great for um, sending out uh, cold emails. Uh, the second thing you want to include, second element, is capability. So um, as I said in the email, you, you may be thinking that this is where you highlight how good you are at voiceover, but actually this element is mostly focused on the client. So this is where you let your potential client know that their goals are of the utmost importance to you and that you're aware of them and capable of helping to achieve them. So my type of email outreach that I do is really um, client or potential client focused. And it takes longer, I would say, than, than what a, maybe some people like to spend doing email outreach. Uh, but it's, it's more personal. And so I like to do that kind of research on the front end uh, to make them more personable, to make it more likely that they're going to want to uh, if not reply to me, at least um, have a good impression of me so that when I do follow-up emails, they're not mad. Um, uh, the third element, expertise. So this doesn't have to be something that you say explicitly, but it should be the tone of all your interactions with potential clients. You want to convey that you know what you're talking about and that they're in good hands with you. So there's a difference between kind of arrogance uh, and saying, I can do this for you. And just, you know, being con competent, confident, and, and having expertise. And um, that's part of your brand also, the way that you deliver your, um, all of your communication with potential clients and with 
you know, current clients that you're actually working with. So that should be a part of just kind of built into your brand and the way that you interact. And then instruction. Um, you might hear this also called a call to action. So give them something to do. If your email stops at, I hope to work with you soon, then that's just asking that potential client to shrug their shoulders, let their email get buried down with other emails that they're never going to revisit again. Um, so if you want them to hit reply so that you can discuss how your service can add value to their work, then tell them to. There's nothing wrong with saying, hey, I'd like you to, to do this. All right, so all of that said, let me check the comments here. And then we'll get into um, actually reading these. And again, wish that I could share them. Uh, but I didn't want to spend longer trying to figure it out and, and make this start even later. It's the issue with uh, live broadcasts, right? Okay, so in the comments, okay, everything looks good here. So this first one, again, this is for reaching out to um, companies who are hiring a uh, someone in the e-learning space. So maybe it's a, maybe it's a company that does um, only e-learning, or maybe it's a company that just produces e-learning for their uh, clients or for their uh, employees internally or something else. But they're, regardless, you've, you've um, discovered that they're hiring someone to work in the e-learning department. And so uh, for this particular one, the subject line is just intro, short and sweet. Um, all right, so I'm going to read through this here. Hi, Drew. I recently learned about uh, your company and your message immediately hit home with me. The reason I'm reaching out to you is that I'm a voice actor and I specialize in helping messages get heard, whether the messages are to internal employees or an external audience. When you're dealing with youth, this particular company is a, they uh, focus on youth. So again, doing research and speaking specifically to what they do. When you're dealing with youth, I know how important it is to be heard and I'd love to be able to work with you to help make the audio in your projects shine. Here's a link to fill in the blank, whether it's your demo, sample of some of your works um, uh, that are indicative of what working with me sounds like. Please hit reply and let me know if you think we may be a good fit to collaborate on future projects. All my best, Carrie. Um, so this template, again, just uh, I can see it, you can't, and I apologize for that. Uh, but some of the elements that we're bringing out there is uh, they know that this isn't a templated response because you're speaking specifically to, uh, it shows that you either are familiar with their company, their organization, or their uh, cause, and you've either gone to their website and learned about it, or you, you, you're already familiar, and that resonates with you in some way. Um, and you kind of... Um, really send that message home by, um, by talking about, hey, I understand what it's like to be in your industry or to, you know, to have the specific goal that, you, that your company has. Um, I, and I want to help make that goal better. This isn't about, I mean, obviously you're trying to get work, but it's not about, hey, will you hire me? It's like, hey, let's, we both agree on this common thing. Let's try and, and meet your goals together. Uh, and then it ends with a call to action. So um, please hit reply and uh, let me know if you think we might be a good fit. Um, so that's one way to do it. I will say that that template starts with uh, the word I. And um, what I like to do is um, not start my templates with starting with I, because that makes it, uh, I feel like, more me focused. Uh, I like to start it more them focused, but I'm also a rule breaker. So if it's, uh, if I feel like it's something that will work for that particular company or it makes sense in that particular situation, I'm not going to be a stickler for things like that because it's different, right? And, it's, and again, it's not a magic formula where if you start it with I, they're going to reply, they're not going to reply to you. And if you do, they won't. Uh, I think that you can use your, um, your, your, you know, people skills and all of that to, to make those calls. So in this particular situation, that one starts uh, with an I. So again, that's the template for um, reaching out for, for e-learning. Um, and what's interesting about that is it didn't get too much into e-learning. So I, I have some where um, I like to talk about, well, what, um, talk about how what my experience is with e-learning because if you can throw in some e-learning buzzwords uh, sometimes that really resonates with um, the people who build e-learning as well so i'm a former e-learning designer uh, did that corporately and so um, i encourage other voice actors to get familiar with some of the e-learning tools and things out there whether that's you know reading e-learning blogs you know to stay up to date with kind of what's trending or just learning about some of the software that e-learning e -learning designers use um, i like to throw around those buzzwords every once in a while just uh you know any uh 
time that you can make another connection with the person that you're reaching out to, that's a positive thing. Okay, so Karen is saying customization is so important. Copy paste has sunk so many candidates at my organization. You can absolutely tell when someone's copying and pasting. And um, as someone who's hired before on different platforms, it's such a bummer when you feel like someone who's a good candidate replies to either a job posting you had or reaches out to you, and you can tell that they're using the exact same thing for every client that they, that they post to. And uh, conversely, it's a breath of fresh air when you get a reply and you can tell they read your post and that they um, are interested in you know, what your goals are. And so you wanna be that person, the person that, you know, especially with cold outreach, because it's so easy to just hit delete. Um, so especially with cold outreach, you want to be the one that's a breath of fresh air and that they're saying, okay, this person actually, they're not just copying and pasting this to everybody. It's not a, you know, to whom it may concern uh, type of email where it, it could work for anyone. It's, it's specific. And I'll say again, it takes more time to do. And, um, and I've seen a lot of people do different types of email outreach where uh, some will just say, I'm not willing to put in that much time. I'm going to just, you know, do the copy paste thing and, you know, I'll let you know how it goes. And sometimes, you know, you can book work doing the copy paste thing, but it takes a lot more emails. So if you're not willing to put in the time on the research side, you're going to be putting in the time on the just pure sending out email side. So you're going to be putting it in on one side or the other. Um, I prefer to do it on the front end just to, to forge good relationships. I want people to, uh, to think positively of me and to look forward to getting my emails. Um, and you, uh, it's more likely to, to have a good long-term relationship and higher quality clients. If you think about the ones that are going to be higher paying, um, are they more interested or, or more likely to reply to someone who's sending out a, a templated email to a million people? Or the ones who are going to be higher paying clients because they care more about their, not care more about their message, but they're willing to invest more in their message, um, they're gonna be more likely to to re resonate and respond with someone who's putting in more care and time into their email outreach. So I totally agree with you there, Karen. Customization is really important. Okay, so the next email script that I wanted to share with you. Uh, so this is short and sweet, um, industry specific, uh, and it's a cold email and it's for um, specifically local company. So if you're reaching out to people who are in your city. Uh, this is another one where I broke the rule of starting with I. The reason, I'm doing that here is because um, the the main connection that you're trying to build is that you're in the same city. So uh, sometimes just getting that is is uh, a big enough um, you know it, it resonates. It's saying okay we're we're local like we could actually meet. And so it's building that connection. So it does start with hi you know first name I'm a your city based voice actor. So I'm a you know, Kansas City based voice actor. I wanted to reach out and get your take on whether you think we might be a good fit to create fill in the blank together. If it's a you know, videography company, uh, if it's an e learning company, you can specify that there. So for this one, I'll just say to create videos together. Now, if you know something about this industry, then uh, this is a place where you can, and again, if you could see the template, it's in parentheses here, you can say uh, something like, you know, in my experience, a big challenge that your industry faces, um, you know, that, or that whatever your company is faces when putting together these corporate videos is fill in the blank. Uh, so that's if you have something there that you can just add as another uh, line of connection. Your... Um, you know, your company core values or your commitment to um, charity or whatever it is, you can pick something uh, that you either learned about that company through their website and say your fill in the blank really resonates with me. I love the opportunity to, opportunity to see if my unique approach to voiceover could be an asset for you. Just hit reply and let me know if you're interested in talking about how my approach to doing voiceover can help bring more flow to your workflow. Uh, and of course, customize that to whatever feels right to you. But the idea is making their job easier. Um, there's an optional place down here that says, here's a quick personal video message from me to you. So if you want to do a video outreach, which we can talk about another time, uh, you can do a quick link there as well, just as another point of um, connection and personalization. Uh, because with all of the like mail merge software out there, you can do some pretty uh, complex customization uh, automatically. So even with an email like this, they might go, 
I'm not, you know, this could be, uh, you know, yes, they, they just wrote this for me, but it also could be that they're using this mail merge type technology. But with a video message, if you say the person's name and their company, that really drives home, hey, I put some time into this. I'm, you know, sending you a, a personal video message. But I do have some, some tricks for doing that that actually aren't very time consuming. I would actually argue it's faster than email. Uh, so that's something you can look into as well. And then all my best, your name. Um, and then you can link to your demo. Sometimes, uh, you know, if it's just in your uh, signature, um, you know, they can click there and link out to your site where your demos are. Um, or you can have in the PS, PS, here's where you can get a feel for the type of work I do and then link to the relevant demo. So it's, you know, super short and sweet. It's easy going. It doesn't focus a lot on you. Um, the thing with describing your voice a lot in an email is no one hires you based on your voice description but they might hire you based on what your voice actually sounds like. So you can kind of spend that time saying, I sound like, you know, this is how my voice has been described or just, hey, take a listen. And, uh, and hopefully you've got a great demo that knocks it out of the park and that, that leaves a, a positive impression. Um, so again, and it's more effective than just describing your voice. Okay, so now let's move on to another. And this is one of um, a, a really neat, uh, type of um, email, I think, because it's not a um, cold outreach. This is actually a response to if someone says to you, well, you know, let's say you send out your cold email and they reply and say, uh, you know, that sounds great, but we use fill in the blank casting site. So we don't really hire um, voice actors directly. Now, when you get a, a response like that, you can leave it alone and say, all right, well, you win some, you lose some, or you can reply to them. And uh, so I have some replies that, that I like uh, that you can use to, to send out to those types of companies. I will say that the um, kind of conversion rate on these isn't great because a lot of times, you know, if they're set with using a, an online casting site, it's, it's hard to change their minds. But, uh, but I'll talk about what I like to say to them and why. So let's say they you let's say there's an online casting site called abc.com and this person says uh, hey got your email that's great but we use abc.com so your re your reply could be something like uh, yes i'm familiar with abc.com in fact i used to have a profile on the site but i found that it's much more beneficial to my clients when we have an established partnership together they know and trust me and we have a shorthand when we work together so we know that every project will be easy and successful one of my long-term clients recently emailed me and called me a Zen oasis in her life. All that said, if you'd like to talk about how it will help you do more videos faster with more confidence to have a voiceover partner on board, I'd love to discuss with you. Plus, of course, you'd be avoiding the 20% fee that comes with abc.com charges. Uh, and if there's ever a project I'm not a good fit for, I can quickly refer you to another trusted voiceover partner who'll do an amazing job for you. Okay, so to break that down a little bit, um, I think the most important thing to point out here is that it doesn't lead with, well, I will save you the fee of using that site. And the reason it doesn't lead with that is because then you are uh, kind of solidifying in the client's mind that the biggest advantage or the biggest, most important thing about hiring a voice actor is the rate. And you want to convey that, hey, you know, um, maybe I'm gonna be less expensive because I don't have the fee, but I might actually be more expensive but that's because I'm going to make your life easier. And I'm a, um, you know, I make my clients' lives easier. Um, I'm a partner when we work together. Uh, we have a shorthand. You want to sell the benefits of, of working with you versus just, hey, it's cheaper, um, especially if it might not be. Um, but so that's the first thing is you don't lead with, well, you don't have to pay those site fees. You want to lead with, hey, this is how I've been able to um, benefit my clients uh, long term. I consider myself a partner. There's the shorthand. It's going to make your life easier. Um, so you say that, and then and then you want to talk about, hey, you know, we can probably do things faster, and you'll have more confidence with your voiceover partner. Again, I'm not saying voiceover talent, but a voiceover partner. Just to reiterate, when we work together, it's going to be a, a personal thing. We're a partner. And then it ends with, because one of the other objections that the client might have is, well, but when I use this site, I get a big list of people. And if I don't need, you know, if I'm female and they're looking for a male, well, I don't need a female, I need a male. So it's easier for me to use this site. So I end with, um, and if there's ever a project I'm not a good fit for, I can quickly refer you to another trusted voiceover partner who will do an amazing job for you. 
So uh, a way to just alleviate that other objection of, well, this site is cheaper, uh, this site gives me more options. Uh, and you can say, hey, actually a long-term partnership is gonna be more beneficial. And you know, my, my other clients have said so. Um, you don't have to copy that, the testimonial necessarily, but just something that maybe your clients have said about you. So you don't have to say, they've said I was a Zen Oasis in their life, but just something that, that pulls out like how, uh, what's, what's a way that you would want that client to feel uh, when they're working with you. It's, um, and you can kind of give a testimonial to that end. Um, and then to, um, to say that, hey, I've got other trusted voiceover partners who can do an amazing job if I'm ever not a great fit. So that's one, um, one kind of um, response you can have to that. And another way you can go with that um, is this is one of the, the things that I've started um, experimenting with just this year. And it's something that I found really, really beneficial that will set you apart from most other um, voice talent. And I would say um, people in general who are doing this type of outreach. And kind of the key is asking a question. Uh, so a lot of times when we are doing this type of outreach, we're putting ourselves in the position of the person who needs something and the person we're reaching out to is in the position of either, um, you know, saying yes or no, like being the gatekeeper. So they have the, the, the power to ask questions. Um, but when, when you ask a question, then it shows that you're not just a, a commodity. Um, it shows that you um, have, you know, a, a brain, like you can be part of this, this uh, relationship and, and it just helps you to, to stand out more. So here's another way that you can respond. Someone says, hey, I'm using abc.com. You say, oh, okay. Um, well, if you have a moment, I'd like to tell you about how I work that might be a little different than most voice actors. Uh, when I work with you, I consider myself a partner and want to make sure you're getting an ROI on your investment with me. I'm not just going to re record the voiceover and be done with it. And I know that you can get other voice actors who will work cheaper than I do, but what's the cost to your brand, your project, your campaign of having voiceover that doesn't carry its weight? Um, so that is the, that's a line that I would um, kind of finagle a little bit so it's not so on the nose, but the idea is um, asking a question there. And, and if that feels at all weird, I will say, if this is a client that said no initially anyway, because they're using a site, it's not hurting you to send this email. So um, the worst they can do is say no again, right? Or ignore it. At best, they can go, that's something to think about. Maybe, you know, I'll, I'll consider this and keep it, keep it in mind. Uh, so you do have to remember not to take, uh, you know, the, the, any of the responses or anything like that personally. And, uh, you know, your job is to do this outreach and to be consistent with it. And as such, they're just like auditioning. Um, there are going to be more no's than yeses. And um, you can't take it personally when you're not the right fit for that specific job or client for whatever reason. All right, guys, thanks so much uh, for joining. And uh, we're gonna be doing these Facebook Lives more often. So uh, just stay on the lookout. If you're um, you know, in the group, you'll get notified there and also in uh, through the, my email list. So thanks for being here. If you have any questions or if you're watching this later and have questions, feel free to type in the chat and uh, we'll catch you next time. Have a great rest of your Friday. Take care, thanks.